Rich here from Traction.gg, and if you're watching this video, you've probably already sunk quite a few hours into Milestone's newest release, Hot Wheels Unleashed. We very much enjoyed it here at Traction, check out our review of the game and John and I split screen head to head, plug plug plug, but I'm here today to help you out with some relatively quick fire tips and tricks so you can get ahead and grab those wins in Hot Wheels Unleashed. If you want to see more videos like this for racing games coming in the future, please do hit subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of all of our new videos. Without further ado, let's go. First up, let's talk about kicking off a race on the starting line. When on this start line specifically, which you'll see most in the game, hold down RT or R2 depending on your platform after the 3 disappears to immediately gain boost on the starting line. It seems to be that how close you are to the 3 disappearing will determine how much boost you get, and make sure to keep the trigger held down and be ready with A or cross so you boost on the word go. If you held down the trigger and nothing happened, then you've missed it. Prepare to roll off on go as normal. However, if you see this more streamlined start starting line, you'll instead hold down RT or R2 as soon as possible and tap A or cross as quickly as you can to keep the line as high up in the boost tiers as possible. This is definitely the fairer start option, but as said, you'll be doing the first one far more. There are two different types of boost cars can have in-game. The first is the more familiar boost bar, the other is a number of pips. With a bar, you hold A or cross to drain as much or as little boost as you like, whereas with the pips, tap A or cross to drain a pips worth, no less, or hold down to continue draining however many full pips of boost you have. You gain boost slowly by default, but you can speed up the process by drifting, drafting, and driving over the grey boost strips. An overall rule I'd say is don't sit on your boost. You're always gaining it back in some way, shape, or form throughout a race, so use it as and when you can. The AI definitely will be. Plus, make sure you're keeping some boost on hand for loops. Sometimes they're pretty big and you can stall at the top and fall down. Boost on the way up and you should be golden. Definitely watch out for the triple loop track in the garage area later on. That one is a doozy. No surprises that Hot Wheels Unleashed has jumps involved, pretty big ones at times. When you've got said boost under your wing, you can rotate your car mid-air using the left stick and boost yourself back on the track if you've misaligned a jump and are about to fall into oblivion. Also, use the right stick to adjust your roll when in mid-air. There are a few tracks which expect you to roll 180 degrees to not end up like a turtle on its back, so keep an eye out. Alongside the boost recharge and speedy chevron strips on the track, you'll occasionally come across these circular boost pads which will give you a bit of a kick without using any of your boost. One thing to keep in mind with these is that its activation hitbox is slightly tall. Your wheels don't need to be touching it for it to be activated. Say you've hit a ramp and you're slightly above it, chances are you'll still get the boost. Next up, don't take the silver magnetic tracks for granted. While you do get some amazing gravity-defying moments when drifting around on the ceiling, don't assume that you're literally going to stick to the track. Unlike Mario Kart 8 and Trackmania Turbo's zero-g surfaces, these won't keep you pinned to the track if you're coming up over a hill or suddenly heading downwards. You can still very much fly off the track, so bear that in mind. Okay, you're in a tiny race car, you're wanting to go as fast as possible, right? Heading into a corner, you can tap the brake to go into a drift, steering as and where to tighten or loosen your turn. However, not every corner can be drifted around at full pelt. Don't be afraid to brake for a corner before swinging your back end out into a drift. There are some pretty nasty tight turns after boost section or big jumps in this game, so don't solely treat LT or L2 as a drift button. Use it as a break too, and your lap times will thank you for not going sideways into a wall. Okay, obstacles time. These barriers can be a bit of a pain. It's even worse to know that their hitbox appears to be slightly wider than its model, so if you think your slim car could squeeze between the track wall and a barrier, chances are you won't. Just give them a bit of space. More annoying obstacles to come up against now, you can avoid the spider's web traps if you're lucky. Stick to the side of the track, provided already laid webs aren't in the way, and the spider might overshoot and miss the track entirely. If you're approaching and the spider shoots a web towards you early, boost and you'll sail beneath it. But there doesn't appear to be any specific distance away that will trigger the spider firing a web, so these tips might not work every time. Sometimes you will just get hit. I've had it shoot directly down at me when I'm underneath it, so there was no way of dodging it. However, if you do get caught, don't waste any boost trying to escape. It's a timed trap and will let you go irrelevant of how much you button mash after a certain time. Save your boost for when the webs break and you'll make a quick getaway. Finally, don't worry about dodging webs at the same spider after you've been caught once already. You'll only get trapped by the same one once again once you're on a new lap. Another obstacle you can try and avoid being hard done by is the Cobra. Jump into its giant maw, take a hard dropping left and immediately loop over the top. 
If you're coming up to it as its mouth is opening, you'll more than likely make the jump. If it's open and completely still, you might want to slow down a touch as at any moment it will snap closed. It doesn't say shut for long, so no need to come to a complete stop. Just be ready to boost across a gap if you've lost more momentum than you were hoping for. If, however, you're amidst a tense race for the win and don't want to slow down, stick to bang on the middle of the track, as if the mouth closes before you're through, you might just land on the protruding tongue and not have to reset. Also appearing around the track are fans, usually set to try and push you off course entirely. However, they can come in useful when drifting around corners, especially tight ones, as you can go in with much more speed and the fans will do a good amount of the work for you. Of course, be sure to drive against the breeze when on a straight, otherwise they will manage to do what they set out to do. An ending set piece you'll be coming up against towards the end of the City Rumble mode is this volcano, a steaming helix of complete bullshit. Stick to the outside edges of the track here, as steam jets can launch you either onto the track below or straight down the middle and off entirely. Also, as the track tightens and steepens as you approach the summit, avoid boosting as to not launch yourself beyond the track. Definitely play it cool through this sweltering heat, as you don't want to scupper your chances of a win or a podium right at the end of the race. Personally, I'd just remove them from the game. I bloody hate them. If one or any of these obstacles completely screw you over, or you've hit a track wall so hard you've gone flying over the edge, you can hold Y or Triangle to reset your car. The moment you know you're not going to make a jump or you're about to fall to your doom, immediately hold down your top face button. Resetting to the track doesn't include any penalty aside from going backwards a little, and there is a second or so of your boost being disabled post-reset. But it's definitely worth taking the reset immediately rather than wasting a few seconds falling knowing you're going to need to reset anyway. Sometimes, however, you might want to throw yourself off the track because provided there are no checkpoints in between sections, you could save yourself a lot of time by taking a shortcut. Either dropping off the side of the circuit onto another section of the track, or cutting up a coned off section on a table, your leads and lap times could be mind-bogglingly good. However, this is probably something you'll master once you know the tracks pretty well. I don't recommend yeeting yourself off the track the first time you're driving it. Okay, we've talked enough about the specifics you'll come up against in a race, let's talk about a specific mode. I don't need to explain what a time trial is, but in Hot Wheels Unleashed you'll have two potential times to beat, one being a simple completion time, the other being the unleashed time. Beating either time on your first lap will end the session, slow-mo, leaderboard, etc. But if you beat neither time, when you cross the line the timer will simply start anew until you beat either one. If you've beaten the normal time and want to have a go at the unleashed time, as per before, the session will only end when crossing the line if you beat the unleashed time, no needless resetting between times set. Nice. When playing through the Hot Wheels City Rumble single player mode, you will come up against sections marked as secret. Hovering over it, you'll see some flavor text about the unlock conditions, and while it might look cryptic, it's actually pretty straightforward. For example, Amazing Drivers with a special appearance by Motosaurus quite literally means driving the event Amazing Drivers in the Motosaurus car and finishing within the top three. Simple. Some of the special events are phrased as such, but some are slightly different. Nothing is overly cryptic, but hopefully this little prompt will help you understand how to unlock them all. A big part of the game is collecting cars, and while the grind for blind boxes could probably be improved, when it comes to inevitably unboxing duplicates, there's quite literally no point in keeping them. When in the collection menu, holding either LT or RT, or L2 or R2, sells or dismantles your car respectively. Selling them for coins means more cash for either more blind boxes or checking out the limited offers, or dismantling for gears means you can upgrade the cars you're using race to race. Speaking of gears, using them to upgrade your car sounds pretty obvious on the tin, which to some extent it is, but keep in mind while your speed, acceleration, braking power and handling will increase with an upgrade, your boost might in fact decrease or even swap between pips and a boost bar or vice versa. Just something to keep in mind if you're not wanting only a single pip of boost on a car you want to turn legendary. Hot Wheels Unleashed shipped with a pretty impressive livery editor and you can sink hours into making the best liveries. Look, I made a McLaren MCL35. But getting a livery you made into the library of ones you can actually use is pretty strange. First, you've got to save and share your livery to the community. Then head to the shared livery section on the main menu, download your own livery, and then it will appear in the car selection change livery menu. Bit of a strange way of doing things, but at least it works. Kind of. While you are driving miniature cars in context, in reality the cars in Hot Wheels Unleashed handle surprisingly differently. This you probably know. But don't take the cosmetic side of the cars for granted. Vehicles such as the Buns of Steel is pretty tall, so you will find it toppling over if you slam it into a drift too hard. It doesn't mean that a lower down car won't have that issue, as the Audi R8 Spider I was using in the aforementioned split screen video was doing it too. So play around and see what works for you.
So, those are our handy little tidbits to help you hopefully win more in Hot Wheels Unleashed. Are you enjoying your time out on these plastic roller coasters? And do you have any more tips and tricks to help out other players? Stick them down in the comment section below. Please do subscribe for more Hot Wheels Unleashed content coming your way soon, ring the bell for notifications, and thank you as always for watching. Keep it pinned, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.